Hello and welcome to theCUBE's coverage of International Women's Day. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got a great guest here, CUBE alumni, and very impressive, inspiring, Rachel Mushawar Scaff, who's Managing Director and General Manager at AWS. Rachel, great to see you. Thanks for uh, coming on. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be here. You all make such a tremendous uh, impact with reporting out what's happening in the tech space and and frankly, investing in topics like this. So thank you. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Your career has been really impressive. You've worked at Intel for almost a decade and, and that company is very tech, very focused on Moore's law cadence of, of technology power in the industry now at AWS, powering next generation cloud. What inspired you to get into tech? How did you get here? And how have you approached your career journey? Because it's quite a track record. Wow, how long do we have? Uh, <laughs> we can but, go as long as you want, <laughs> it's great. You know, all, all joking aside, I think at the end of the day, it's about this simple statement. If you don't get goosebumps every single morning that you're waking up to do your job, not good enough. And that's a bit about how I've made all of the different career transitions that I have. You know, everything from building out data centers around the world to leading uh, network and engineering teams to leading applications teams to going and working for, you know, the largest semiconductor in the world. And now at AWS, every single one of those opportunities gave me goosebumps. And I was really focused on how do I surround myself with humans that are better than I am, smarter than I am, companies that plan in decades, but live in moments, companies that invest in their employees and create like artists. And frankly, for me, being part of a company where people know that life is finite, but they want to make an infinite impact, that's a bit about my career journey in a in a nutshell. Yeah, what's interesting is is that um, you know the, over the years a lot's changed, and the theme we're hearing from leaders now that are heading up large teams and and in running companies, um, they have you know they have twenty plus years experience under their belt, and they look back and they say, well, things have changed and it's changing faster now. Hopefully, faster to get changed. But they all talk about confidence and they talk about curiosity and and building. When did you know that this was going to be something that you got the goosebumps and were there blockers in your way and and how did you handle that? Huh. There's always blockers in our in our way and I think a lot of people don't actually talk about the blockers. I think they make it sound like, hey, I had this plan from day one and every decision I've made has been perfect. And for me, I'll tell you, right, there are moments in your life that mark a differentiation. And those moments that you realize nothing will be the same, and time is kind of divided into two parts, right? Before this moment and after this moment. And that's everything from before I had kids, that's a pretty big moment in people's lives, to after I had kids and how do you work through some of those opportunities? Before I got married, before I got divorced, before I went to this company, after I left this company. And I think the key for all of those is just having an insatiable curiosity around how do you continue to do better, create better and make better. And I'll tell you, th those blockers, they exist. Coming back from maternity leave, hard. Yeah. Coming back from a medical leave, hard. Coming back from caring for a sick parent or a sick friend, hard. But all of those things start to help craft who you are as a human being, not as a leader, but as a human being, and allows you to have some empathy with the people that you surround yourself with, right? And and for me, it's, you can think about these blockers in one of two ways. You can think about it as, you know, 
every single time that you're tempted to react in the same way to a blocker, you can be a prisoner of your past or you can change how you react and be a pioneer of the future. It's not a blocker when you think about it in those terms. Mindset matters, and that's really a great point. And I want I, you brought up something that's interesting. I want to bring this up. Talk about the challenges in, in different stages of your lives. You know, one thing that's come out of this uh, set of interviews, this uh, of day, and the, the conversations is that I haven't heard before is the 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 result of COVID. Working at home brought empathy about people's personal lives to the table. That came up in a couple of interviews. What's your reaction to that? Because that highlights that we're human to your point earlier. It does. And I'm so thankful that you don't ask about balance because that is a pet peeve of mine um, because there is no such thing as balance. If you're in perfect balance, you're not moving and you're not changing. Um, but when you think about you know, the impact of COVID and how, how the world has changed since that, it has allowed all of us to really think about, you know, what do, what do we want to do versus what do we have to do? And I think so many times in both our professional lives and our personal lives, we get caught up in doing what we think we have to do to get ahead versus taking a step back and saying, hey, what do I want to do? And how do I become a, um, you know, a, a better human? And many times, John, I'm asked, hey, how do you define success or achievement? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, my answer is really for me, the greatest results that I've achieved, both personally and professionally is when I eliminate the word success and balance from my vocabulary and replace them with two words. What's my contribution and what's my impact? Those things make a difference regardless of um, of gender. And I'll tell you, none of it is easy ever. Yeah. I think all of us have been broken. We've been stretched. We've been burnt out. But I also think what we have to talk about as leaders in the industry is how we've also found endurance and resilience. And when we felt unsteady, we've continued to go forward, right? When we can't decide, the best answer is do what's uncomfortable. Um, And all of those things really stemmed from a part of uh, a part of what happened with COVID. Yeah, yeah. I love the, I love the uncomfortable and the un, the balance uh, highlight you mentioned being off balance. That means you're growing. You're not standing still. I want to get your thoughts on this because one thing that has come out again this year and last year as well is having a team with you when you do it. So if you're off balance and you're going to stretch, if you have a good team with you, that's where. People help each other, not just pick them up, but like maybe get them back on track again. So, but if you're solo, you fall, <laughs> you fall harder. So can you, yes, what's you your do. reaction to that? Cause this has come up and this comes up in team building, workforce formation, goal setting, contribution. What's your reaction to that? So my reaction to that is, is pretty simple. Nobody gets there on their own at all, right? Passion and ambition can only take you so far. You've got to have people and teams that are supporting you. And here's the funny thing about people and frankly about being a leader that I think is really important. People don't follow for you. People follow for who you help them become. Think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. And when you think about all the amazing things that companies and teams are able to do, it's because of those people. And it's because you have leaders that are out there inspiring them to take what they believe is impossible and turn it into the possible. 
Can you give an example of that? Can you give an example of your approach on how you do that? How do you build your teams? How do you grow them? How do you lead them effectively? And also make them inclusive, diverse, and, and equitable. Whew. Um, I'll give you a, a great example of some work that we're doing at, um, at AWS. This year at reInvent, for the first time in its history, we've launched an initiative with theCUBE called Women of the Cloud. And part of Women of the Cloud is highlighting the business impact that so many of our partners, our customers, and our employees have had on the social, on the economic, and on the financials of many companies. They just haven't had the opportunity to tell their story. And at Amazon, right, it is absolutely integral to us to highlight those, um, those examples and continue to extend that ethos to our, to our partners and our customers. And I think one of the, the things that I shared with you at reInvent was, you know, as, uh, as you two's Bono put it, <laughs> We'll build it better than we did before. And we are the people that we've been waiting for. So if we're not out there advocating and highlighting all the amazing things that other women are doing in the ecosystem, who will? Well, I've got to say, I want to give you props for that program. Not only was it um, groundbreaking, it's still running strong. And I saw some things on LinkedIn that were really impressive in its network effect. And I met at least half a dozen new people I never would have met before through some of that content interaction, engagement. And this is like the power of the current world. I mean, the getting the voices out there creates momentum and, and it's good for Amazon. It's not just personal brand building for right. my next job or whatever you know, reason. It's sharing and it's attracting others and it's causing people to connect and meet each other in that world. So it's still going strong. <laughs> and this program we did last year was part of Rachel Thornton, who's now at MessageBird and Mary Camerata. She was, they were the sponsors for this International Women's Day. They're not there anymore. So we decided we're going to do it again because the impact is so significant. Um, we had the Amazon education group on. Um, it's amazing, it's free and it's got to get the word out. I mean, that's talk about leveling up fast. You get in and you get trained and get certified and there's a zillion jobs out there in cloud, right? Uh, and partners. So, this kind of leadership is really important. What was the key learnings that you've taken away and how do you extend this opportunity to nurture the talent out there in the field? Because when you throw the content out there from great leaders and practitioners and developers, it attracts other people. It does, it does. So look, um, I, I think there's two types of people, uh, people that are focused on being and people who are focused on doing. And let me give you an example, right? When we think about labels of, hey, Rachel is a female executive who launched Women of the Cloud. That label really limits me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather just be a great executive or, hey, there's a great entrepreneur. Let's not be a great entrepreneur, just go build something and sell it. And that's part of this whole women of the cloud is I don't want focus, I don't want people focused on what their label is. I want people sharing their stories about what they're doing. And that's where the lasting impact happens. Right. I, I think about something that uh, my grandmother used to tell me, and she used to tell me, Rachel, how successful you are doesn't matter the lasting impact that you have is your legacy in this very finite time that you have on earth. <laughs> Leave a legacy. And that's what Women of the Cloud is about so that people can start to say, oh geez, I didn't know that that was possible. I didn't think about my career in that way. Um, and you know, I, all of those different types of stories that you're hearing out there. I want to highlight something you said. We had another um, Amazonian on the program for this, for this uh, day earlier, 
And she coined a term, because inside Amazon you have common language, one of them is bar raising. Raise the bar, that's an Amazonian um, term. It means contribute and improve and raise the bar of capability. She said, bar raising is gender neutral. The bar is a bar. And I'm like, wow, that, is, that was amazing. Now that means your contribution angle there highlights that. What's the biggest challenge to get that mindset set in, in, in culture, in these cultures? Because oh. it's that simple. Contribution is neutral. It, it absolutely is neutral. But it's like I said earlier, I think so many times people are focused on um, success and being a great leader versus what's the contribute what's the contribution I'm making and how am I doing as a as a leader you know and when it comes to a lot of the leadership principles that Amazon has including bar raising which means insisting on the highest standards and then those standards continue to raise every single time and what that is all about is having all of our employees figure out how do I get better every single day, right? That's what it's about. It's not about being better than the peer next to you. It's about how do I become a better leader, a better human being than I was yesterday. Awesome. Um, you know, I read this really cute quote and I think it, uh, it really resonates. You meditate to upgrade your software and you work out to upgrade your hardware. And while it's important that we're all ourselves at work, we can't deny that a lot of times ourselves still need that meditation or that workout. Well, I hope I don't have any zero days in my software out there, so, but uh, I'm going to definitely work on that. I love that quote, I'm going to use that. Thank you very much, I'm, that was awesome. Um, I got to ask you, I know you're really passionate and we've talked about this around, I see you're a great leader, but you're also focused on what's behind you in the generation, pipelining women leaders, mm -hmm. okay? seats at the table, mentoring and, and sponsorship. What can we do to build a strong pipeline of leaders in technology and business? And where do you see the biggest opportunity to nurture the talent in these fields? Hmm. You know, that's a, that's a, a great, great question. And, uh, you know, I, I just read a uh, Forbes article by another Amazonian, Tanuja Reddy, who talked about, you know, some, some really interesting stats. And one of the stats that she shared was, you know, by 2030, less than 25% of tech specialists will be female less than 25%. That's only a 6% growth from where we are in 2023. So in seven years, that's, that's alarming. So we've really got to figure out what are the kinds of things that we're going to go do from an Amazon perspective to impact that. And one of the obvious starting points is showcasing um, tech careers to girls and young women and talking openly about what a technology career looks like. So specifically at Amazon, we've got an AWS Git IT program that helps schools and educators bring in tech role models to show them what potential careers look like in, in tech. I think that's one great way that we can help build the pipeline but once we get the pipeline, we also have to figure out how we don't let that pipeline leak. Meaning, how do we keep women and uh, you know young women on their tech career? And I think big part of that, John, is really talking about how hard it is, but it's also greater than you can ever imagine and letting them see executives that are very authentic. And we'll talk about, geez, you know, the challenges of COVID were a time of crisis and accelerated change. And 
here's what it meant to me personally, and here's what we were able to solve professionally. These younger generations are all about social impact, they're about economic impact, and they're about financial impact. And if we're not talking about all three of those, both from how AWS is leading from the front, but how its executives are also taking that into their personal lives, they're not going to want to go into tech. Yeah, and I think one of the things you mentioned there about getting people that get IT, good call out there, but also um, Amazon's going to train 30 million people, put hundreds of millions of dollars into education. Yes. And not only are they making it easier to get in, to get trained, but once you're in, even savvy folks that are in there still have to accelerate and there's more ways to level up, more things are happening. But there's a big trend around people changing careers either in mm -hmm. their late 20s, early 30s, or even those moments you talk about where it's before and after, even later in the careers, 40s, 50s. Leaders, yes. like, like uh, well, good experience, good training, who were in another discipline who reskill. So you have um, you know, more certifications coming in. So there's still other pivot points in the pipeline. It's not just down here. And that, I find that interesting. Are you seeing that same leadership opportunities coming in where someone can come into tech older? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've got some amazing programs uh, like uh, Amazon Returnity that really focuses on how do we get other, you know, how do we get women that have uh, taken some time off of work to get back into the workforce. And here's the other thing about switching careers. If I look back on my career, I started out as a civil engineer, heavy highway construction. And now I lead a now I lead a sales team at the largest cloud company in the world. And there were, you know, twists and turns around there. I've always focused on how do we change and how do we how do we continue to evolve? Yeah. So it's not just focused on um you know, young women in the pipeline, it's focused on all gender and all diverse types throughout their career and making sure that we're providing an inclusive environment for them to bring in their unique skill sets. You know, a building has good steel, it's well-structured, roads have great foundations. You know, you got you got builder, you got the builder in you there. <laughs> yes. So I have to ask you, uh, what's on your mind uh, as a, tech athlete as an executive at AWS. Um, you know, you got your huge team, big goals, the economy's got a little bit of a headwind, but still clouds transforming, edges exploding. Or what's your outlook as you look out in the tech landscape these days and how are you thinking about it? What, what's your plans? Can you share a little bit about what, what's on your mind? Sure. So geez, there's so many trends that are top of mind right now, everything from zero trust to artificial intelligence to security. We have more access to data now than ever before. So the opportunities are, are limitless. When we think about how we can apply technology to solve some really difficult customer problems, right? Innovation sometimes feels like it's happening at a rapid pace and I also say, you know, there are there are years when nothing happens and then there's years when centuries happen. And I feel like we're kind of in those years where centuries are are happening. Cloud technologies are refining um, sports as we know them now. There's a surge of innovation in smart energy. Everyone's supply chain is looking to transform Custom silicon is going mainstream. And frankly, AWS's customers and partners are expecting us to come to them with a point of view on trends and on opportunities. And that's what differentiates us. <laughs> that's what gives me goosebumps. I was just day. gonna ask you that. Does that give you goosebumps? How could you not love technology with that excitement? I mean, AI, throw in AI too. I just talked to Swami um, uh, who heads up the AI and database. And we just talked about the past 24 months, the change. And that is a century moment happening. The large language models, computer vision, 
more compute, compute's booming than ever before. Who thought that was going to happen? It's still happening. Massive change. So, I mean, if you're in tech, how can you not love tech? I know. Even if you're not in tech, I think you've got to start to love tech because it gives you access to things you've never had before. And frankly, right, change is the only constant. Yeah. Um, and if you don't like change, you're going to like being irrelevant even less than you like change. So we've got to be nimble. We've got to adapt. And here's the great thing. Once we figure it out, it changes all over again. And it's not something that's easy for any of us to operate. It's hard, right? It's hard learning new technology. It's hard figuring out what do I do next? But here's the secret. I think it's hard because we're doing it right. It's not hard because we're doing it wrong. It's just hard to be human and it's hard to figure out how we apply all this different technology in a way that positively impacts us, you know, economically, financially, environmentally, and socially. And, and everyone's different too, so you got to live those things. I, I want to get one more question in before we, your, my last question, which is about you and your, and your impact. When you talk to your team, your sales, you get a large sales team, North America, Tanuja, who you mentioned, and EMEA, we're going to speak with her as well. You guys lead the front lines helping customers, but also delivering the revenue to the company, which has been fantastic, by the way. So you, what's your message to the troops and the team out there? When you say, you say, take that hill, like what is the motivational pitch in, hmm. in, in a few sentences? What's the main North Star message in today's marketplace when you're doing that big team meeting? I don't know if it's just limited to a team meeting. I think this is a universal message. And the universal message for me is find your edge, whatever that may be, whether it is the edge of what you know about artificial intelligence and neural networks, or it's the edge of how do we migrate our applications to the cloud more quickly, or it's the edge of, oh my gosh, how do I be a better parent and still be great at work, right? Find your edge and then sharpen it. Go to the brink of what you think is possible and then force yourself to jump. Get involved. The world is run by the people that show up yeah. professionally and personally. So <laughs> show up and get started. Yeah. As Steve Jobs once said, the future that everyone looks at was created by people no smarter than you. And I love that's that quote, that's really there. Final question for you, I know we're tight on time, but I want to get this in. When you think about your impact on, the, on your company, AWS, and the industry, what's something you want people to remember? Oh, geez. Um, I think what I want people to remember the most is it's not about what you've said, and this is a Maya Angelou quote, um, it's not about what you've said to people or what you've done, it's about how you've made them feel. And we can all think back on leaders or we can all think back on personal moments in our lives where we felt like we belonged, where we felt like we did something amazing, where we felt loved. And those are the moments that sit with us for the rest of our lives. I want people to remember how they felt when they were part of something bigger. I want people to belong. It's not, it shouldn't be uncommon to talk about feelings at work. So I want people to feel. Rachel, thank you for your time. I know you're really busy and we stretch a little bit there. Thank you so much for contributing to this wonderful day of great leaders sharing their stories and you're an inspiration. Thanks for everything you do. We appreciate you. Thank you. And let's go Let's go do some more Women of the Cloud videos. We got more coming. We'll bring those stories on, back up the story truck. We're ready to go. Thanks That's so much. Right. Thank you. Okay. This is theCUBE's coverage of International Women's Day. It's not just going to be Mark Chase. That's the big celebration day. It's going to be every quarter, more stories coming. Stay tuned at siliconangle.com and thecube.net. Here with bringing all the stories, I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.